Yeah, we've we've welcomed people from the media. And yeah. We've had a lady come down from Radio Four. Yeah. Um, and we've also had Plymouth um, Plymouth Live and the Plymouth Herald and things come in and watch the process. Yeah. Um, and the general consensus has been, is that it? That is it. Oh, thank God, you know. But every single one of those people who came, in, including the people from Warsaw and the Action, were terrified about what they were potentially going to see or what what um, they would witness. Mm. And then they come out and they say, I didn't think it's going to be anything like that. Cameras here. Like, if this is so normal and natural and, you know, humane, and look at them shutting these big gates. It's absolutely insane. Like, slaughterhouses are worried that this gets out to the public. Why? You know, why? It's so normal and, you know, so ethical. It's so ethical here. You know, what's the problem? Process. Yeah, so you can have a look at that if you like. Wow. Are we allowed to film it with the camera? Um, what do you think? Are we allowed to film it through the... Okay. Yeah, I'll just check with Gage. Okay, no problem. Yeah, so they'll see all real time. This is at, at 28 minutes past 12. So this will be the steer that you um, showed us, yeah? Yeah. And this is the animal that I'll, I can show you this animal being slaughtered on the film. Okay. So you can see exactly how, how it all went. Yeah. Here he is com coming into the stun box. So here, there's a check gate here, and okay. there's also one behind as well. Just using a, a, a stick, there's too low to get your arm in. But as you can see, it's there's no, like no a, hitting a of lot the animal. of places, no. Well, I suppose they're really just trying to meet, they're trying to keep up the production line, aren't they, when they do that, aren't they? Yeah. So you can see the check gate's closed there behind. Okay, yep. And that's me. Rocking the bobble hat. So we actually used black shot on this bullock because he was sort of borderline. I wasn't sure if he really was going to be 600 kilos or you know, bigger. Yeah. So we always err on the side of caution. To um, make sure it's a really clean shot. Yeah, to make sure it's, it's it an It pierces stun. through the skull. Hello, sweetie. Okay, so these cows here are all waiting to be slaughtered. So they'll go into the kill line where we, where we just were, get led down that path and shot in the head from the top processed into steak for the the individual who raised them so it's interesting to raise someone take care of them take them here to be chopped up into pieces and then eat their body for me like that's just like really outside of what i would consider moral Bullock step back, so it's sort of a bit, bit tricky for Gage to reach in. I just, I personally couldn't um, do that, but I would just want to keep them as friends. So this is where, you know, for example, oh, hello. Uh, yeah. shoot from above. I think we okay. Be looking for the cone. So you coming out? So because this animal is quiet, it's yeah, yeah, it wasn't issue. You could see he wasn't stressed. He wasn't thrashing no. around at all. So he's essentially unconscious now? Yes, yeah, he's unconscious. So we, we double check, we check for any reflex of the eye or any yep. rhythmic breathing before we open open the gate in case there needs to be a restun. Okay. So you can see there's there's no rhythmic breathing, there's no blinking of the eye, there's no movement. More often than not, their tongue will hang out. Yeah. The BBC were doing a series of programmes called The Food Chain. Okay. And they came from London and they said, they approached, I don't know how many abattoirs between Cornwall and London, and they, both, they either didn't get a response, or they got a no. Yeah. And we said, well, well, why? Mm. Well, why won't anyone... What have they got in? to hide? You know, yeah. You're, yeah. you're a legitimate organisation making a, a, an informative programme. Hmm. Well, why would you not want to cooperate or, or let people see what you do? I guess... I guess mainly the problem uh, they would see, like big big places like that, is that it might affect their business. Mm. And a lot of big plants have 
supermarket contracts mm. and so they don't want people in because if they say oh yeah well you know if you know like i said sometimes things go wrong if something went wrong in front of them mm. and then that was recorded and they said oh my god you never guess what um this abattoir you know they supply such and such a supermarket and this happened in front of us mm. and it was oh my god horrific yeah, then yeah so we shackled the the front leg yep so we're hoisting him now to to over the blood pit and i think historically a lot of things can be misconstrued you know yes i've i've seen some footage um of other abattoirs and the slaughter and stunning process and i was it made me feel sick mm. this is our ov who's present every single slaughter and that there is a is a vertical chest stick you go vertically just to get as many arteries as you can or yeah what it does is, it, is by using vertical chest stick you, you're cutting the arteries that are coming from from the heart so okay. they bleed out an awful lot quicker Haman's wasn't it in ottery st mary and you know i i, I thought they were heavy-handed with the cattle it mm. wasn't illegal but i from how we operate i thought it's a, it's a bit heavy-handed a bit unnecessary and that's all just reflexes the animal kicking yeah in. yeah so you're just waiting for the blood to drop out the animal? And yes. how do you know when well, it's a, it, will stop. It, it will stop? Yeah. So the heart's beating the blood out? At the moment, yes. Yeah. But, you know, that was, from them, was construed as, oh my God, you know, shock, shock, horror. And I was like, yeah, you know, he's a bit unnecessary. Mm. Um, but yeah, at the same time, it wasn't illegal. Mm. And, uh, you know, we've oh, seen... Absolutely. We've seen some things happen, like, you know, I've seen farmers treat their animals worse. Yeah. Some farmers. Some farmers are brilliant, as mm. you can tell by the livestock when they come well, in. Well, I guess but because, like, when an animal becomes property, their property, they can treat their property essentially how they want. Like, if I don't want to clean no, my, if no, I don't want to clean can't. my car, like, well, if you're looking at it, like, well, they're just, they're just stock to me. They're just yeah, but you've still got trading standards. And as you can see, uh, you know, his tongue is out, there's no rhythmic breathing, there's no movement from the eye, so that is, that is an effectively stunned animal. Yep. We had um, a pig come in once, didn't we? It had been beaten. It, yeah. And he brought in, I think it was like six or seven pigs, and you open the tailboard of the trailer and they're all scrabbling over each other, and you're thinking, something's not right here. Yeah. And then we slaughtered them, and one pig was like, he was beaten black and blue, like with, it must have been like an Alpatine pipe or something like that. Oh my God. Um, so I phoned him up and I said, when you come in, we need to have a chat. Yeah. Um, so he came in and I said, look, we've had to throw away that entire carcass. Um, I said, I've taken pictures. I sent them to trading standards. And well, we both said to him, didn't we? If you ever bring anything like that here again, mm. we'll have nothing to do with you. I was like, there's yeah. no need for it. He said, oh, it wouldn't load. I was like, there's ways and means about it. Um, like, so, you know, sometimes if, you know, you get pigs that are really stubborn a lot of people don't know that if you put a, like a bucket get a big bucket and you put a bucket over his head they walk backwards so you can literally just like mm. oh. so yeah. the pig didn't want to get on the truck and he bashed the pig with a pipe and then you down we, we slaughtered it so the bruising came out you after the pig you was processed you couldn't see the marks on the skin until the hair was removed I see, yeah, yeah okay now so, so and when, obviously when it, for the bruising to come through wasn't it because yeah. they had only loaded that morning and you seen the damage to the animal's body after you'd removed the skin and thought there was something up there? Oh, oh gosh, yeah, it was it was horrific. Yeah. So she said she was at um, a halal plant, um, and she said, so that there is nerves. Yeah. Okay. Um, and she said she witnessed once an animal taking sort of fourteen minutes to die, which. You know, yeah, I've got a video on my channel where and yeah, an animal talk about yeah they take about ten to fifteen minutes to die. Yeah. So that is, that is the entire slaughter process. Where will the rest of the processing happen? In this room here? Yes. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, you get contrast like that. You see, you know, but then you get some farmers who are lovely and dope on their animals. You get other people who are I've seen are farmers have tear up driving their animals to the slaughterhouse. We've had people yeah. here yeah, people in tears in the lairage. You know, um, upset. we've said, yeah. you know, if, if you feel this strongly, you don't have to do this. Yeah. You don't have to do it. You know, you've got the option. You can keep these animals and around and... Yeah, you know, but they've all said, well, it's always been that this animal is, is going to go in the freezer. The destiny of the animal. That is it. Thank you. And if they took it home, the missus would kill them. <laughs>
But yeah, and we've had guys in tears and whatever. Yeah, yeah, and we've said you can come in and yeah, watch said, if, yeah. it, if it would put if, you at Would ease. it reassure you if you want to come and see it stunt? And some guys have gone, would you mind? No. Grab it with the tongs and it's gone like millisecond. They say, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Oh, thank God. You know? They're visions of, I don't know what, of us bludgeoning it to death with a club out there. Yeah. You know? So, uh, yeah. Very interesting that uh, people have these emotional reactions to letting their animals go. There's nothing go. wrong with that. You know, mm. To, 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 to look after something and care for it is, mm. is good. Yeah. You know, like you're saying, it's my property. You can't, you, you can't really have that mentality. A lot of people do, though, don't they? Like, I, uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know any people, really, not personally, that I would call horrible. Mm. Okay, so he's hoisted onto a cradle. Yeah, it's a, it's okay. A so we've removed the head. So that's the first thing you do, eh, is remove the head? Yeah. So the head is, is removed and skinned. Um, that way the vet can check to see you know, the shot, if it was like in the right place and everything else. Yep. So you can see, even now, you know, the animal has been dead for you know, quite a, f a few minutes. Um, there are still you know, reflexes. You can see the tail still moving. And obviously the head is off, so there's... There's it nothing is, it is communicating no, with the body no at all. all. It is literally just nerves. I guess some people just get desensitised and like, look, the guy that beat up the pig. I mean, if they're not always doing it. I don't think it's desensitised. I think it's it's frustration. Mm. You know, like we oh, said earlier yeah, on, they've got their own they've got their own characters and pigs. Pigs are by far the hardest, the most difficult yeah. livestock to handle, particularly. They're very anxious animals. They can oh, be. It only takes yeah, yeah it only intelligent takes like one little thing, and as soon as pigs realise something's up, that's it. They're like not doing it. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah, but that's why we offer a lot. We offer a collection service because we, you know, having been pig owners, mm. abattoir owners, and handlers, we know the animals like their behaviours and, and and generally mm. how things will go and a good setup and what isn't a good setup. Mm, yeah. So we offer a collection service for small holders. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is we'll go and we'll, we'll load up the animals and like I said, you know. There was, um, we went and picked up a couple of pigs for an, el an elderly couple. Well, they weren't that old, were they? But he'd just had like a, a, a knee replacement or something and she was going to have a hip done, you know. So we rocked up and got one pig in and then the second pig was like, oh, not Something's quite sure. Yeah. yeah. I see you process. You help process the animal as well. Yeah, I'm fully licensed to yeah. So it's a case of yeah. put, put some corn on the tailboard, walk away, leave them and just wait yeah. 15 minutes later just walked on in quick yeah. shut the gate Done. and also in my limited experience with pigs if you let them find their own way it's quicker they're trying to force, force them. them yeah you try and force them and then they think you're up to something mm. they start uh, so you just want them not to know what's what's about to happen if they have any idea that something's yeah. up and well that's where you, if, if we've got pigs that come in that are stressed if they're not used to seeing people or you know, if if they've had a nasty transport here, a nasty journey, and they urinate in the stun pen, mm. then what they what they do is the stress. They release a hormone in their pee. So what we do, if you've got had any pigs that have come in and they're stressed, stressed or anxious, then what we do is we wash wash the hormone because other the other yeah. pigs can smell it and they yeah. know something's up yeah. in here. So so they'll go wow. to walk in and then all of a sudden they're just like. Oh, hang on. Something's going on in here. Yeah. The people who are responsible for the animal welfare aren't on the floor doing the jobs. So yeah. Whereas myself and John, you know, we're the managers, we own the abattoir, we're on the floor doing it. Yeah. So we've invested all this money for this system um, for only people like yourself to come and watch it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's full transparency. All right. Yeah. And it's interesting, some slaughterhouses act like they've got something to hide. and Slaughterhouses are worried that this gets out to the public. Why? If it's just food, if it's just, you know, you're not doing nothing wrong, why hide? And you know, the thing is, you know, ask anyone, farmer, you know, smallholder, vet, anyone, when you're working with livestock, sometimes things go wrong, but it's not what happens, it's how you deal with it that yeah. makes you a good slaughterman or, you know, a good vet. You have to do what is best for the animal. Other slaughterhouses wouldn't do that, would they? Probably not, because they're all in a rush rush. Wow.
they, because there's such a big demand and they're trying to meet that demand and yeah, things yeah, have I to happen, know, yeah? I, I don't know if Kelly explained, a, a lot of the big plants, the, the staff are paid on piecework. Yeah. So the more you do, it, no. the, so the more you do, the more you get paid. Yeah. So everyone's in a hurry up, you know. A quota so, to meet, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. sort of thing. So if, if a pig is like, um, oh, I'm not quite sure. Rather they, than backing off yeah. and taking the pressure off, and the pig's saying, "Okay, nothing's, nothing's, nothing's happening. I'll, I'll walk on." They will. They're going to make it happen. It. They're going to yeah. make yeah. it happen yeah. because yeah. they're so, under pressure themselves in there. Yeah. You know. Yeah, if you're holding up the production line, they're holding up their money and their bottom line, and they're yeah, going to get they're going to make all the other yeah. all the other guys are going. Come on, hurry up! You know, oh. we got to get on. So yeah, they don't have time to take the animals into account in there. You know, it's, more often than not, no. Yeah. But then all of that comes back to the consumer. You know, the consumer doesn't want to pay. Sort of and the skin, what happens with the skins? Um, the hides, we we send those off. Um, we get. Uh, 14 pounds a hive. When we first bought the place in 2013, we were getting 35 pounds a hide. Um, so, for you know, small abattoirs, it, that, that's you know massive, massive difference. A massive blow in profit. And what yeah, was there any reason for December, that? Um, basically, it was it's the Chinese. The Chinese were paying over the odds for for hides and skins for quite a long time, um, and ended up with a lot of. Um, um, other tanneries going out of business because they couldn't afford to pay what the Chinese were paying. Um, but also, you know, for example, like, you know, the vegan movement, um, a lot of these hides and skins now, you know, have very little value, if any. Because the demand so, is for, for leather is yeah, slowing down? Yeah. If our overheads go up, the price has to go up because, mm. you know, if we can only slaughter eight pigs an hour rather than a big plant that can you know, their costs are very similar, but they can process 20 pigs an hour, then we have to charge more. And so, you know, for the consumer to turn around and say, do you know what, that's too expensive. It's like, you have to ask, what am I buying? So if you're buying pork or beef or lamb from, you know, a reputable source who, and they know what breed it was, where it was reared, how it was slaughtered, how it was butchered. And there's, it's not just, you know, a lamb chop. Mm. There's a story behind it. That is what the consumer needs to be asking, and that costs a little bit more. Mm. But it's one of those things, isn't it? It's Most consumers quality. don't want to really know that no, far no, into no, it. No, of course yeah. not. Here we continue skinning. We're having a conflab. I seem to do more talking than I do actually working. <laughs> no. <laughs> and so we've taken the skin off. Okay. And this is the, the gutting process. That's okay. it, clearly only done half a job. Oh, and they're taking the cheeks off. <gasps> Gage told me it was Dad that put them all in one bag. Also, I just wanted to ask you, this question just come up. Do you slaughter and kill and eat the animals that in your own plant? Yes. Yeah. I, now, the only um, like poultry I eat is organic chicken. That's right. the only... You don't that's slaughter the po only poultry from here. No. You should Birds terrify yeah. me. <laughs> Birds terrify. But all the other, you, eat, you still eat pork, beef only, and lamb. Only, only slaughtered. slaughtered here. <laughs> I won't. I won't buy meat. From You've slaughtered else. the the animals yourself that you eat. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, um, and generally, you know, lambs we buy Scotch bat faces, don't we, off Donna, um, and they come from Mary Tavy. Mm -hmm. So they're grazed. They're born on the farm. They're grazed up on the moor. So there's lots of heather, lots of gorse, lots of mm -hmm. moss, um, and we will generally slaughter. Like, we'll buy them off her when they're sort of two tooth. So they're sort of about twelve, between twelve months and two year old. Mm -hmm. Um, and that way you've got a much better flavour. They had a longer life, and you all of the, all of that experience does add to the flavour mm -hmm. by giving them slightly longer. Okay. Um, and we know her as a person. She's a really lovely lady. She's a very good farmer. Mm -hmm. um, so that's you know we're very particular well, now. Well, yeah, you would be. Um, that's interesting. That's mm. very interesting to meet yeah. someone who. Sources, slaughters, and eats the the animals well, that they. Well, that's yeah. that was the, sort of the definition of a master butcher mm. back in the day. So you burn all the heads and stuff like that. Yeah. And do you use any? Do the the customer want any of the insides or? Um. Yeah. The offal is always used. So hearts, lungs, liver, um, the cheeks, the tail. How old is that steer? I can tell you. Like on average, what would you say? Um, 18 months or 
no, 12 months? I would, I would have said he'd be pushing sort of, yeah, 20, 24 months. Okay, two um, years, yeah. He was born the 18th of February 2017. Okay. Yeah, that's his, his holding number. Okay. That's his ear tag number. Um, his breed. It's like similar to like a human being's birth certificate in a way. It is, yeah. And then, so this is the date that he was moved off of his original holding, which is the 28th of January 2019. So he came in yesterday. And this is the day that he was killed. It's a birth after. and death certificate. Yes. But this here, it will, it will, you know, if he could be moved within three or four or five farms like, through his life, um, and all of that would be registered on his passport. Wow. So this is, this is his passport, a cattle passport. I am, my mind is like blown right now. Yeah. I didn't. So, you know, there should be full traceability. Hello, darling. A boy, that's girl. Boy. That's a girl. That's a girl. Hello, darling. I can check the passport on her age, but I've, I've got a feeling she's one that she couldn't, maybe couldn't get in the car. She's quite shy. Yeah. And we, you know, a small plant like us here offer that, mm. whereas a big plant, once they've been slaughtered um, and they're then butchered, you you can lose that, that traceability of line. that. that sirloin steak was from that animal and that sirloin steak was from that animal it can get when you when Mixed you're processing up. yeah when you're processing massive amounts so like a, a, like if you go confusing. to the supermarket and buy some minced minced meat that could be minced meat from like all these different animals yeah yeah it could be so a burger could contain more animals than it could contain two or three you know genetically it could contain you know meat from two or three different animals yeah well i don't know i think that's We've, that's, we've got a lot of everything fully transparent here. I'm really, really surprised. And that there has really blown my mind. I didn't know they had all individual passports, death, birth, death and birth certificate. Yeah. Okay, well, I appreciate your transparency in the tour. And, um, you know, you could have easily said no, but you've, this is really surprising that you let us in here. And, no, yeah, this, and this is what we're all about, isn't it? Well, I just want to say, like, although we have, like, different views on, you know, killing the animals, and you know, I don't believe animals are here for us to use as products and treated as property. I believe they have their own individual value and we should be guardians of them. I can see that this is, like I can see when you're talking about this, it's an emotional topic for you yeah. and you're very connected to this. And um, you're trying to minimize the harm as much as possible, but doing something that you feel you don't see there's any other option but to try to make this, you know, the killing of the animals as, you know, ethical as possible. Yeah. And you, in contrast to what other slaughterhouses are doing, are trying to make this, you know, as clean and quick and stress-free. Yeah. Um, you would still say that you believe this is 100% a needed thing to happen? Yes. Yeah. 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 And I guess that's where you and I would break off because I would say that, you know, it's not necessary and we don't need to do this to animals and we have, you know, we could, there's alternatives that we could exercise. But I guess that's probably where we break off because yeah. you feel like there's no other option but to do it. And if we're going to do it, do it in the best way possible. Yeah. And I feel like there's, a, there's torture and kill. Uh, treat them nicely and kill, but or not kill at all. And I'd, I've, I, I lean towards that option for myself. Yeah. So I guess, but I just want to say, uh, yeah, I, I understand, and I completely appreciate mm. you know the, like your point of view, mm. um, and you know I, I, I completely respect it. Mm. Um, and it does just come down to the fact that um, you know, and I said to Chris when when um, Devon Animal say came down last um, that you know not everyone is going to turn vegan overnight so there is an you know whether you guys like it or not there is a current need and demand for it mm. um so you know if if in 10 15 20 years time the entire world does become vegan um and we don't see animals out in the field or whatever and they're we're working be made on it we're working houses, on it um you know then then obviously that's something that would need to be looked at later on down the line. But until that point, um, and people do eat meat and people do want to eat meat, um, it's important to eat meat that is produced, slaughtered and, and processed in the most um, traditional, ethical and 
you know, the best way, what I consider the best way possible, which is by um, respecting them, having empathy and treating the animal as an individual rather than a unit that has to be processed, you know, however, however many units per hour. You know, they've got their own personalities, they are individual and they need to be treated as such. Whereas here, they can and are, mm. whereas a lot of big places, they don't have the time to do so. Well, I suppose that's because there's such a demand. Yes. So how could you possibly meet the demand of billions of people? You need billions more animals and the process has to be but for me, like um, respecting someone, treating someone as an individual also includes respecting their right to live. Mm -hmm. And that's where we branch off. But yeah. Thank you so much for this right. civil discussion and agreeing <laughs> to being on camera. And thank you. Uh, 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 can we spend some time with the, with the animals? Yeah, we yeah. Bit, John's uh, just bedding them up. So he's just going to have a little shuffle round. Um, so and then, yeah, you're more than welcome. Are we <laughs> oh, my God. Look at are we filming? One yeah. sec. Look at this adorable, adorable angel. But, but, but considering how is this a girl or a boy? Now, I believe it's a girl. You're a girl. Oh my I god. Think she must have been a tame lamb. You're beautiful. Look at that face. I want to do one more last question before we finish this. Mm -hmm. Would you ever do a vegan challenge for 22 days? No. Why, no why, way. why not? No way. Like as a, just as a personal challenge? Um, what do you got to lose? How, no, you know? I couldn't. You couldn't? No, no way. Because what, what, what would just hold you back? You missed the taste of meat too much? No, or? in that this job is incredibly physical. Oh. Um, and you, know, you have to have a certain amount of Strength? protein. And I, I, I know it's a bit, you know, there's like tofu, but, there's but like, tofu tastes like There's like cashew. bodybuilders that are vegan, you know that, right? Sorry? There's like bodybuilders that are vegan. Oh yeah, but you know, I just, I personally couldn't do it. You couldn't? No, no. I thought that would be a nice addition to the end of the video and go, hey, would you do a vegan <laughs> challenge? And she'd go, okay, I'll give it a go. And we all go, yeah. <laughs> He's adorable. How old? One year. Oh, he's still a baby. Oh, darling. And stay, so the night before they get dropped over, so she'll be slaughtered tomorrow. Yeah. You're going to be slaughtered tomorrow. And she doesn't know. Oh. Is there anyone in here? Do you think it's kind of for them not to know? I just look at it from my perspective. Like, whenever I ask these, like, ethical issues, I just think, like, what would I want? Yeah. Yeah. Would you want to know or not know? Well, of course not. I'd rather just be if I if someone had to kill me, I'd rather just you know go to sleep and not wake up. Yeah. Uh, you know, but I would also not want to be killed as well. No, no, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, know. <laughs> I, I would <laughs> prefer not to be killed and chopped up into pieces and fed to my father, <laughs> but. <laughs> Maybe we should take her for a maybe we should take her for a vegan meal, like a really somewhere really good. We'll select somewhere really good because she's gonna be. And then you guys can come around mine for a barbecue. Oh. As long as there's Linda McCartney ones. Yeah, yeah Linda McCartney's only. Okay. Thanks so much. That's thanks. Right. Thanks for the, thanks for your time. Appreciate no it. No worries. Thank you.